Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And today's lesson is going to be about factoring a difference of squares. So let's check it out. All right. Here, ladies and gentlemen, when factoring two squares, all right, first of all, anytime they ask you to factor anything, there's two things you want to keep in mind. One, you will always factor out the GCF first, meaning the greatest common factor. So if any of the terms that you're dealing with, if you're dealing with an expression where all the terms have something in common, you want to factor that out first before you try to attempt any other factoring process, procedure, steps, all that good stuff. The second thing is you're going to always look at the words factor, the instructions factor as meaning factor completely. Because a lot of times when you're asked to factor, factoring is not just going to be one step. It could also mean that you could factor again and again and again depending on the problems. So be aware that when asked to factor, you may have to factor multiple times. All right. So let's keep all of that in mind. In addition to that, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that when you see an expression in the form of a squared minus b squared, the factoring pattern for that is going to always be a plus b times a minus b. All right. So once again, when factoring a difference of two squares in the form of a squared minus b squared, meaning that you have something squared minus something squared, a perfect square minus a perfect square, then you will always factor that out into being a plus b times a minus b. All right. So let's look at some problems, shall we? All right. Start this out. Here in problem number one, I have x squared minus 16. So my first term is a perfect square. It's x squared. And 16 is a perfect square. Remember in our video going over simplifying square roots, make sure that you have these perfect squares memorized. That's one of the few things that we at Fort Bend Tutoring will stress upon you is to have the perfect squares memorized. So our suggestion is to learn the first 15 perfect squares, meaning 1 squared all the way through 15 squared. But if you want to excel and be very, very good and have an easier time in your mathematics classes, learn your perfect squares from 1 squared all the way to 25 squared. All right. So that's the strong suggestion to you. OK, so looking at this, ladies and gentlemen, I know that 16 is a perfect square. That was my original point. So being as though I have identified this as a difference of two perfect squares, then I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses here. And I'm going to take the square root of the first term, which is going to be x. And the square root of the second term, meaning the square root of 16, which is 4. From here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll need a positive and a negative. Now, I'm going to tell you something about myself, ladies and gentlemen. I am a very, very positive person. I'm an optimist. I always look for the good things in life. And you know what I found? When factoring a difference of two squares, you can tell a lot about a person. So if you naturally always want to put the negative sign first, because it doesn't matter which one you put first, by the way, that if you always put the negative sign first, I wonder, let me know, give me some feedback on this, whether or not you're a pessimistic person because you put the negative sign first all the time. I'm kind of figuring out in my experience that the majority of the people that do lead with a negative are negative people. Interesting, huh? Well, I always lead with a plus sign. So you do have that option to lead with a negative or a positive. Just keep in mind that the signs must be different between the two. And I personally always prefer to put a plus sign first. So if you want to roll like Mr. Witt, hey, put your positive sign first. All right. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And this is going to be the answer to the problem. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. You got it. Anytime you want to check your work, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to check the answer that you have here, you can always use the distributive property. You can always, aka FOIL, these two binomials. So we do have a video on multiplying binomials. So go ahead and check that out, right? So what you want to do is get your arrows popping. And this is just a check, by the way, okay? That if you do it correctly, you, you really don't have to check, right? That's because it's right. But if you want to check, then this is what you do. X times X is going to give you X squared. 
x times negative 4 is negative 4x, and 4 times x gives you a positive 4x, and then finally, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Once I have this, ladies and gentlemen, you can combine the middle terms together, and you'll end up with our original problem, x squared, because, hey, the, the 4x is canceled out to 0, minus 16, and that checks out. Yeah, it's like that. So that's a check, ladies and gentlemen. All right, there he is. All right, let's check out the next problem. In problem number two, we have 4x squared minus 9y squared. So here, we do have a difference of two squares. 4x squared is a perfect square, as well as 9y squared. So since we've recognized that these two are perfect squares, and you do have the difference between them, we're going to open up two sets of parentheses, like so. And the square root of 4x squared is going to be 2x. The square root of 9y squared is 3y. And I prefer a plus than a minus. Once again, if you want to put a negative sign first, you can. That would be correct, as long as your second sign is a positive sign, mm -hmm, a plus sign. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the end of that problem. Yeah, not bad, huh? What you think? What you think? Okay. And once again, let me know in the comment section if you guys prefer a negative sign before you write your positive sign. You know, want to see how many of the students out there are pessimistic, okay? So let's continue on, moving along. We have our next problem. And in our next problem, we have 25xy squared minus 49. Well, this first term is a perfect square. Notice that I have an even exponent on the x variable. I have an even exponent on the y variable. So anytime your exponents are even, that's automatically a perfect square, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Especially in its simplest definition. Every number can be made to be a perfect square, just to let you know. However, just generally speaking, if it's an even exponent, we count that as a perfect square. All right, so because we have a difference of two squares here, then I'll open up my two sets of parentheses, like always, and the square root of 25x squared y squared is going to be 5xy. All right, so I'll need that for my first term in each set of parentheses. Then the square root of 49 is 7. All right, remember it's a good idea to have those squares and their square roots memorized so that they'll come easily to you when you're trying to factor your difference of squares, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so here is the answer. That's it. Yeah. We have 5xy plus 7 times 5xy minus 7. And remember, if you wanted to check this answer to verify if it's correct, you can always multiply it all out together using the distributive property or the FOIL method as we have in the video called multiplying binomials. So check that out. All right. So that's problem number three. Let's move on. Problem number four. And problem number four, we have 4x squared minus 64. Ladies and gentlemen, you should always, always first check to see if you have a GCF, the greatest common factor, showing in your expression that you're trying to factor. In other words, look for the GCF first. That's what I was trying to say. So do that. Okay. Now, if you look at these two terms, they both have 4 in common. In other words, 4x squared can be divided evenly by 4, and 64 can be divided evenly by 4. So I can factor out the GCF of 4. That leaves me with x squared minus 16. Remember that factoring is division. So I'm dividing out the 4, and that leaves me with x squared minus 16 inside the parentheses. However, remember at the beginning, I informed you that you should always factor with the understanding that you should factor completely, meaning that there sh could be multiple times that you need to factor, all right? And in this case, we can continue to factor because what's left inside the parentheses here, that x squared minus 16 is actually the first example that we had today, and it's a difference of two squares. So bring down your GCF and open up two sets of parentheses. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of 16 is 4, and you'll have a plus and minus sign there in your answer, ladies and gentlemen. All right, remember you'll need one of each, and it doesn't matter the order. My preference is positive first. So that's going to be the answer that we have for this problem. And keep in mind that we factored out that 4 originally because that was our GCF. So make sure you have that in your answer. Sometimes students will forget that they factored out a GCF, the greatest common factor. So make sure that you still have that present in your answer. All right, done and done. Moving on to the next problem. Let's check it out. 
problem number five. With problem number five, we have y squared plus 121. Well, the first term is a perfect square. That's right, y is squared, thus the name y squared. And 121 is 11 squared. 11 times 11 is 121, and 121 is a perfect square. The thing that's different about this problem is that we have a plus sign in the middle. That's right, it's a sum of squares. Anytime you have the format of a squared plus b squared, this is a sum of squares. And a sum of squares is not factorable. It's not factorable. You can't do it. All right? So because of that, the answer is prime. All right? So you can, depending on your teacher, you can say that you can state that the expression is prime, meaning that it's already in its lowest factored form. You can't factor it anymore. Or you can write out the fact that it's not factorable. Okay, so you can also write that as a response. So just ask your teacher what they prefer, whether they prefer you to write it as prime or not factorable. But bottom line, you can't factor a sum of squares ever. That's right. You can't factor it out. So not unless you're about to get into some imaginary numbers or some other stuff that we're not dealing with right now. All right, that's higher level algebra. Then uh, you'll just leave your answer just like that. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a box around prime. I prefer prime. Less letters. All right. That's problem number five. Let's move on to the next example. Moving on to the next example. Here we have 50x cubed minus 98x. So as we've talked about before, you should always look to see if you have a GCF, the greatest common factor if these two terms have anything in common other than one. And in this expression, they do. We can factor out the following. We can factor out a 2. Mm -hmm. And notice how both terms have an x in common. So therefore, I'm going to factor out the lowest exponent on my variable, which is x to the first power. So I'm going to factor out 2x. That's my GCF. That's the greatest common factor. So factoring out 2x from 50x cubed minus 98x, I'll end up with 25x squared minus 49. All right, so that's 25x squared minus 49. That's left inside the parentheses, and lo and behold, it's a difference of squares. Yeah, yeah, a perfect square minus a perfect square. So remember, when factoring out your GCF, make sure you bring that value down. That's right, it stays with you, not going anywhere. So go ahead and write down your GCF first, then I'll open my two sets of parentheses up, and the first term of 25x squared is going to be 5x. And the square root of 49 is 7. And you'll have a plus and a minus sign there. All right, you'll have a plus and a minus sign there. So that is the answer to that problem, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So remember, you always factor out the GCF first. Then after you factor out the GCF and you still end up with a difference of two squares, you'll factor that difference of two squares. And remember, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And I put a nice red box around that answer there. Yeah. OK. That's how we do that problem. Okay, here, number seven, okay, we have 16x to the fourth power minus 81. This is a difference of two squares because the first term is squared. It's a perfect square. And remember, I told you, anytime your exponent is even, that is a perfect square that you're dealing with. So let's attempt to factor this problem. I'm going to start by opening up my two sets of parentheses here. I have the square root of 16x to the fourth power, which is going to be 4x squared. I also have the square root of 81, which is 9. I'm going to have a plus and a minus sign. Well, the first binomial is a sum of squares. Remember, it's a perfect square plus a perfect square. This cannot be factored. But the second binomial can. That's a difference of two squares. So I'm going to bring down this 4x squared plus 9. And I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses here. And the square root of 4x squared is 2x. And the square root of 9 is 3. Therefore, you'll have a plus and a minus sign. And this is going to be your answer. Remember, we had to factor completely. That means that sometimes you'll have multiple layers where you're going to be factoring. All right. So make sure that your end result contains binomials that cannot be factored, that every factor that you have is not factorable itself, that you can't keep going, in other words. All right. So that's the answer. 4x squared plus 9 times 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Done and done. And once again, it doesn't matter the order of these binomials. As long as you have them all present, that's going to be the answer. 
Okay, let's check out the next one. This is going to be our last problem for this session. And for problem number eight, you have a common form of a difference of two squares. Four is a perfect square minus another square, which is n squared. And I can open up two sets of parentheses. And as always, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of n squared is n. All right? So, oh, that's an ugly n. We, we're not going to do that. There we go. Better n, better n. Okay. So, I'm going to have a plus sign and a minus sign. And that's it. So, why did I want to show you this problem? Well, it's because you have options here. We could have done the following with this problem. So, let me go ahead and rewrite this for you. If I had 4 minus n squared, let's say that your teacher or yourself had a preference for putting the variable first. Well, you could do just that. You could rewrite this problem as negative n squared plus 4. However, it's not in the perfect format that we normally had seen the rest of the problems, right? So you could factor out a negative, and that'll leave you with n squared minus 4. Okay, so once you have your negative factored out, you can bring down that GCF of negative 1 and open up two sets of parentheses, and the square root of n squared is n, and the square root of 4 is 2, and you'll have a plus and a minus sign. Therefore, this will be your final answer that way. So I wanted to show you that if you wanted to have that first first term being a variable, then you could rewrite the problem and then factor it as is, factoring out a negative. So either one of these answers, the 2 plus n times 2 minus n or the negative n plus 2 times n minus 2, both of these are correct for that problem of 4 minus n squared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt once again with Fort Bend Tutoring, and this was factoring difference of squares, factoring a difference of squares. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So once again on Facebook, go ahead and like our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring. Go ahead and follow us on Twitter, and go ahead and comment. Let me know whether or not you'd like to leave with a positive or a negative. And this is Mr. Witt saying peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.